Yo, what's going on Dragon Ballers? Welcome back to another video. This time we're talking about six cards you should buy before set eight. Kind of like a market watch video. I know some people have been asking for that kind of content and I've done videos like this in the past, but I didn't really consider them like market watch videos, but I guess they kind of are because I'm giving you guys my opinions on cards you should pick up before price spikes. So we'll go with it. I'll continue to do these when I do feel like they're appropriate. I feel like it's kind of hard in this game in particular to, to do market watches because we don't always have giant influxes in cards. But with that being said, we're doing one today. If you guys new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you never miss a video like this. Want to get involved in the Dragon Ball Super community? Make sure to check out the Discord in the description below. Finally, guys, three ways you can help me out today. Number one, check out the Patreon in the description below. Lots of competitive content for you. Number two, if you'd like to buy any of the cards you see in this video today, you can use my link to TCG Player or to Beater Collectibles in the description below. And finally, guys, there's a the join button down below for the YouTube channel memberships. All that stuff helps out a lot. With that being said, we will get right into this discussion. So, number one, the card I think you should pick up before set eight drops is Shocking Death Ball, and particularly talking about the foils and judge versions if you like to flex like that. So, at the time of recording, the foil versions of Shocking Death Ball are sitting at around $6. The judges are starting to go from like seven to around eleven dollars ish and the reason i think you should pick this up is two things one the other sparking negates like time magic dimension magic they're sitting anywhere from like 10 11 12 to 16 dollars in the case of like time magic time magic obviously is very meta relevant with you know the yellow broly leader and whatnot but i do think the second reason is i do think green leaders are going to make a bit of a resurgence in set eight in my personal opinion and i will bring you guys a deck profile on this at some point in the near future i think kaioken goku the revived goku is a very very good archetype it just draws a lot of cards it's very reminiscent to me of something like hercule with like deadly defenders i know hercule didn't really play deadly defenders but you get that same type of draw power which i really really think is a good thing it's blue green so you could go theoretically a button deck route just like the yellow blue decks are going and i think that that type of deck will make a strong resurgence a lot of people have a lot of confidence in dr wheelo as well as a alternate win condition deck you know kind of stally so of course you're gonna need your play set of shocking death balls and if you can get them foil i think six dollars is a great price because a card that is such a staple in an alternate foiling especially judge uh, i think that if you really want to get those foils i think now is the time to do it at around six dollars per copy so next up we have weiss godly fundamentals this card is the most baffling to me uh regarding its price point this card reads activate main if your leader card is a beerus card and you send this card from your drop barrier to your warp that's the cost choose up to one card in your life add it to your hand then choose up to one of your opponent's battle cards and it gets minus five thousand power for the duration of the turn so this came out of the magnificent deck both the broly and the gogeta one whichever one you got you got two non-foil copies of this card and the potential to get to and the potential to get a foil copy and this is so baffling to me because it's sitting at about a dollar per copy for foils guys this card is going to be a beerus staple like i don't think you can play the deck without this card and of course you can get it in the non-foil version but we see other foils in that set like demi -Gras. we see other foils in that set like uh, paragus the forebear and you know they're currently relevant so they're they have higher price points you know anywhere from like seven eight nine ten eleven twelve dollars so i think we scally fundamentals once set eight comes out i think this card is going to shoot up in price so if i was you i would pick these up i would pick a play set up immediately after watching this video uh, make sure to do that because i think this is going to be a mainstay in beerus i don't think you'll be playing beerus without playing this card this card is so flexible both the take a life effect and the minus 5,000 power effect are both up to one. So you don't have to take a life to minus 5,000 something. So it still even has value after you're already at four or less life and self-awakened. Likewise, if you're going for game, right? If you're going for game, you want every single card in your hand possible. So what you do is you just get rid of these cards from your drop area. You just remove it from the drop area, take a life. Essentially, that is a draw one, especially when you're going for game again and needing every single card you can. Otherwise, if you're trying to play more of just the sit back control route, you just warp it from your drop area. You minus 5,000 something and it doesn't cost you any more life. This card, again, I'm baffled. This card's only sitting at a dollar per copy. Definitely pick these up as soon as possible. Next up, Beerus Fickle God. Now, specifically, what I'm talking about with this slide is the check lands so beers the fickle god the red green broly the blue green 17 and the red yellow weiss all those cards that come into energy uh, untapped if you have a appropriate colored dual color energy right 
um, for Magic, you know, people call them checklands, so I'll call them checklands from here on out. And specifically, I'm talking about the stamped versions of these cards. So, uh, at the current point of recording this video, the Beerus and the Broly for the stamped versions are only sitting at about 10 to 11 $12 per copy. I think that's crazy. I think you should pick these up as soon as possible, because if we are going to grow into a game that's going to be, you know, revered as one of the top three in the near future, hopefully, these are cards that you're going to want to have in your collection and preferably stamp if you do prefer the higher rarity because you know it's a it's going to be a staple for as long as blue yellow or any of these color combinations are popular it'll be a staple for you know the, the game's entire history unless they somehow come out with something that's even more powerful than these cards but these cards are really really powerful on the on the surface of it and i think you should pick up the stamp versions for the ten dollar price range i think it's a very very good uh, good competitive price and i think they will only go up from there as time goes on so definitely pick those up in my opinion and make sure to check, pick up the ones that come out in set eight like i said the 17 and the Wii's red yellow as long as they are in the same price point i mean realistically i think at any price point you should consider picking them up because i do think they'll only go up from here so if you look at it as like an investment in the game i think it's a pretty good one i did pick up the stamped versions of these and the broly pretty much as soon as set seven came out so i do personally recommend it next up we have fearless pan this card very interesting situation so for the longest time this card was sitting at about ten dollars before it got reprinted in the draft box and it's one of the most powerful finishers in any red aggro you know kind of low to the ground deck think about like fearless pan this is like the top end card where you just give everything double strike go in for game then this got reprinted in the draft box now it's sitting at about five dollars per copy for the shatterfoil versions the original versions are maybe like six seven dollars at the time of recording but this card i do think is a snap pickup right now i think red is really gonna make a comeback now that shenron is a lot more nerfed red is one of those very interesting colors in this game it's probably the most interesting to look at because it's got so many strong cards vegeta exploding weakness topo pan leader vegeta baby leader all these different powerful cards that you know and there's more to name of course but there's so many powerful cards and yet the deck sometimes falls lackluster uh, to a lot of other powerful things in the format like blue yellow and shenron at least in the case of north american nationals i know european nationals went a lot differently but i do think red is on the comeback right now especially with a lot of support it's getting in set eight so i would pick up fearless pans at fives per copy i'd pick up a play set for 20. i think that's a very very good price i do think this has potential to go up again because it is an sr it is kind of tough to get because it is all the way back from set three and if you can get your draft box reprints it makes it a bit easier to get but i do think this card has potential to shoot up so i would definitely definitely consider picking it up Next up, we have Foo the Dark Banisher. Particularly here, I am talking about the foil versions of this card. So Foo the Dark Banisher is about a $4 copy uh, per copy for the foil versions. I'd recommend picking it up as soon as possible for several, several reasons. Number one, it is a generic finisher in just about any deck you can think of. As long as by turn four, turn five, you can fill the drop area up, which pretty much almost all decks will because, you know, at the point where you're grinding back and forth with your opponent, comboing to not take damage, comboing to KO battle cards, your battle cards are getting KO'd, you're going to start to build up a drop area. Secondly, uh, this card, again, is one of the most powerful boss monsters for any deck you can think of if you're lacking a boss monster. Third thing, Hatchiak is coming out in set eight. So believe it or not, you're not probably using this in Hatchiak, although you might. Really what I'm using this card for is an out to Hatchiak. So Hatchiak, if you guys remember what the leader does, he specifically says when you are opponent, uh, well, when both players attack with a battle card that is seven cost or less, they can only attack with that battle card for the duration of the turn. Foo, generic eight drop battle card you can play on turn four. This is gonna be one of the biggest outs to Hatchiak. This is a card that just gets around its, uh, its auto bypasses its floodgate type of effect and just about any single deck can play it so at four dollars per copy for the foil i would highly recommend picking it up as soon as possible i do think this is another card that has a high potential to uh, to spike in price last card on the list guys denial of hope one of the most broken counterplays in this entire game again this is another one of those cards that red has access to that is just so powerful hitting anything 20k or less is really sometimes an overlooked feature like that hits so many things even past like four drops it's five drops six drops in certain scenarios hits hits like six drop bobbity for example super super strong card the foils of this are sitting at about three dollars per copy and i'm very very surprised by that again i do think red is going to make a resurgence coming into set eight and i think denial of hope is obviously going to be a staple card in those decks i think three dollars per copy is an incredible price point 
to pick these up for and guys sorry if you watch this like a couple days later and the prices do spike i'm sorry if people started buying out these a lot but i do think that this is a very 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 low price to start picking up these cards for so overall guys this has been the market watch ish video i hope you guys enjoyed it uh, let me know if there's anything in the future where i can do differently for market watches i know this is more of like a speculative version of it where you know i tell you guys things to pick up beforehand but i don't know do you guys want to just know the news like oh x card has spiked recently y card has gone down in price recently do you want to know things like that i'm not sure this is kind of new to me so let me know in the comments below guys hope you enjoyed this video again definitely pick up these cards use my link to teach you player in the description below thanks for watching i'll see you guys next time